Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna go around the garden, look at how things are progressing. I think it's been between two and three weeks since our last tour and it has warmed up quite dramatically. Like it was in the 50s and all of a sudden it's 87, 85, and I kind of feel a little bit bad for the plants almost. And it's weird because we have some super tunias in pots and daffodils just opening in flower beds. The weather has just been so erratic and next week we're supposed to go down into the low 60s again, which I'm kind of excited for. It'll make maybe our blooms last a little bit longer on our spring stuff. But we wanted to start right here because the view is just so beautiful. We're kind of early evening at this point and I love to sit out here. In fact, all of us sit out here a lot already and we haven't had the seating grouping, seat grouping for very long and we use it a lot. Um, so the sun comes down on this side and just kind of shines through all the layers we've got going on here. Now we've not mulched anything on this. Actually, <laughs> there's only one spot that has been mulched two, one around the Hartley and then in the South Garden, we just started mulching today. Um, so we still need to go through and do all of that. And that will merit its own tour, I think, because it makes everything look so much different when you have all the drip tubing and like old mulch and leaves and stuff like that covered. But right in front of me here, we do have a Dawn Viburnum in bloom that looks just so beautiful. And it's really fragrant, really wonderful spot to have something like that. And that was here when we moved in and I appreciate that one a lot. Um, right in this area, the last time we toured through, I think maybe we had a little bit of color in the daffs right here, but very little going on over there. And this is a mixture of peach cobbler and white lion double daffodils. And I think we planted like a thousand in this area, a lot, just a sea of daffodils. And I just love it. And then after those are done and we start cutting back the foliage from those, then there's a bunch of hostas. You can actually see some of them coming up in here. In fact, this is one I think I transplanted from around the gazebo area. Uh, same with this. This is a double file viburnum. I don't think this had any leaves on it two weeks ago. I got to look back. I feel like everything was bare <laughs> when we walked through. Uh, this is a really fun little grouping right here. We've got some white bleeding hearts with the autumn frost hostas and the daffodils. I really like this spot right here. It's just such a sweet area. And as we walk this way, you can see that I think these just were buds last time. These were little plugs I planted last fall for hellebores. And we've got a few of them. I think there's 40 some in here. There's several of them that are blooming already. Just one little bloom, which is so sweet. I didn't expect blooms for a couple of years. Uh, down the west side here, some of these uh, daffs are just starting to open. These are down this haw. So let's take a look. Yeah, look at that double creamy white with the peach center they are so so pretty and then the um, spot on lungwort so i moved those from around our crab apple up in the front yard so those made the transplant beautifully doing really really well japanese maples are leafing out this here is i think an emperor one uh i'm pretty sure that's what it is this is a katsura right here and then I've got a some other weeping variety in this pot back here that I cannot remember. Do you remember, Erin? It has lacy leaves and it's green and it gets very full and it kind of hides all this stuff, which we do eventually want to have painted <laughs> at some point to match the house. Just haven't made it there yet. Uh, you know, I planted these epimediums, which I've never had these before. And so many of you guys were excited to see them in our garden because it's a plant you guys love as well. So they're doing really well so far. And the seducer hostas have started to come up and leaf out since I planted those, which was not that long ago. We have daffs right here that are starting to peter out. These actually came up and bloomed a lot earlier than the down this how they get a lot of sun right in this area. We just started planting containers today, summer containers. So isn't that weird? Like let's look at daffodils and then here's my super tunias. It's just crazy. Oh boy, up here we have some Dordogne tulips starting to bloom in these wicker pots up here. The Gamay blend tulips have kind of petered out. They're fizzling. I need to dig these up. I thought I was going to get around to it last year and I just didn't. These were in the little uh, cutouts in our lawn that used to be right here and they were odd. They, did, they didn't match. Um, so anyway, I left the tulips thinking I was going to transplant them, but aren't the Dordonias beautiful? Just that bright apricot with kind of little melon pink notes on the outside. Can't wait to see them fully in bloom, but I don't even think, I mean, they might've been this tall a couple of weeks ago. 
So I'm really thrilled to see that happening. The at last roses are looking healthy and robust. I think we're gonna have a really good show from them right here. There's six of them in this row and we are gonna be retooling. I think I talked about that in the last tour. I need to make these flower beds much bigger. You know, if we swing this way, you can see our skinny little flower bed. No flower bed should ever be <laughs> that skinny, especially when it's lining a very wide brick walkway. So I need to retool that. And do you see that one red tulip? Do you see that? No. Who did that? Somebody's, somebody's trying to play a joke on me. What is this? Did you come out here and sneak one into the flower bed? <laughs> How funny and random. This right here used to be field or driveway. One of the two field, I think. How weird. Hmm. Let's head up toward the corner where there's some tulips. They're almost done blooming, but you can see the color, at least. The color that they were. Crab apple is just starting to open, the blooms are. <laughs> we were just talking about how we're so used to seeing crab apples and plums and things blooming in April here. And here we are in May, and they're just starting to bloom. Oh boy. We had some fun with sidewalk chalk today. Forgot to clean it up. <laughs> So yeah, you can see that clearly these tulips have started to fade. Uh, these are the big apricot. And then there's some other ones that I didn't plant. They were here when we moved in, uh, but they're all kind of just are happy together. The muscari, which I really like the grape hyacinths. I think they're beautiful. And I noticed because I planted some of these in the orchard that the pollinators love the muscari. I mean, today there was bumblebees out there. Uh, whew. Bee in my hair, there it is, honeybee. Uh, there were honeybees, hoverflies, uh, moths. There was some painted lady butterflies and bumblebees all in the orchard today. It was like this picturesque moment, but I noticed them all feeding on the muscari. And then we've got a crab apple that is about ready to be amazing. All, already looks kind of amazing, doesn't it? Just in bud, especially with the light shining on it like that. Okay, in these containers up here, we have a tulip called Hellalites. Just a very nice clear tulip with an aphid right there. There you go. We do have, oh, then another aphid for crying out loud. It's a really pretty tulip though. It looks really great in this pot right here. I think just cause the background is so nice. A Little bit more growth on the Globemaster alliums in here. These are gonna be so awesome when we have some big blooms towering over these boxwoods. Now I think next week is gonna be my window to do a very light trim to kind of, you know, shave up some of this stuff that's a little bit wonky and to take off a little bit of this winter kill when it cools down. Uh, I think that might be my only chance because I bet you anything it's gonna shoot right back up and get hot again. Okay, so over here, did we have like three tulips in bloom last time? I think it was very few, but this is a mix that looks very Easter-ish. I was kind of hoping it would be maybe in some kind of color by Easter, but it's a, a blend called Beaujolais. And it's got uh, different pinks and this very soft double yellow, which that's the one that has the pink variegation. Look at this. So you've got the soft yellow, it's got green on the outsides, a little bit of blush pink in here, and then the leaves are variegated white and pink. These came from color blends. I'm gonna have to ask them because I'm not sure do they list, I'm not sure if it's listed out what exact varieties are part of the blend, but it would be interesting to know what that one is in particular. There's also some angeliques that we planted in here. I don't see any angeliques in bloom in here. Did we, plant, did we plant angeliques? I'm pretty sure I did. Either way, this has been super fun because I don't think that I've ever planted spring bulbs in this, these before. Okay guys, I actually meant to go toward the Hartley first but I just got carried away with the West Side Garden. So let's head over here. In fact, let's take in the view from the driveway because the tulips behind the Hartley are spectacular. Our lilac, it's got buds everywhere. It's gonna be amazing. We'll have to do another tour in two weeks. Can you see that view? Isn't that a picture right there? You've got the white cubed blend tulips below Hebe and then you look straight through and you can see the sauna tulips behind the Hartley and the clear water tulips right up next to it. Oh, not a whole lot has changed in the North Garden. There's a few tulips that we planted. 
that are just starting to open, but we probably won't venture back there because I really want you to see this spot. Sun just went behind a cloud a little bit. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Look at these tulips, you guys. I could not be happier with this spot back here. They just have turned out to be a spectacular show. And I was a little worried there for a minute because they grew at such different rates. Like this square came up first, then this one, then that one, and then this was our last one. So if you look close, like the tulips are a little bit more faded and they will peter out first and probably in order. But I was worried that these were so far ahead of that square, I thought we wouldn't have them in bloom at the same time. And I thought it was gonna look so weird and it was gonna be something I would struggle with, you know, until the end of time, every time I planted these up. So I'm super thankful that they did this. They're just gorgeous. Did I already say they're called Sana? S-A-N-N-E -N -N -E is how it's uh, pronounced. And the thing I love about them here, these are the freshest ones. Should take a close up look at these. I love the pointy petals. I think they're just so beautiful with that real creamy pink and then that deeper pink with the sagey green leaves. It's just a very soft, pleasing look, I think. I'm so excited about it. And I do have four crab apples, which I do wanna show you a few things in the greenhouse. I wanna show you the crab apples, which I have sitting next to the greenhouse. They're almost in bloom and they're gonna come in here as soon as these are all done. I'm gonna to have to dig out a few of these tulips to plant those. That's okay, cause I can plant the tulips out somewhere else, but I'm hoping that when we plant annuals and things in here that we can maintain these tulips so that we can enjoy the same exact show next year, at least. Okay, the clear water tulips are equally as awesome. I was tentative, I have to admit, about planting a white tulip up next to a building with white, so much white in it. I thought, oh, is it gonna contrast enough? You know, did I make the wrong choice? Should I have done something with big color? But I feel like they brought a serenity to this space. It's a very peaceful look, and they're lo just low enough to where you see the distinction between the white top and the white tulips and they're the perfect height. Oh, they are just so gorgeous. I mean, if you were planting tulips for cutting, look at how long these stems are. Look at this. That stem is so long and they're so strong. So let that, you know, consider that if you are looking for a good cutting tulip. And then the Globemaster Alliums have put on quite a bit of growth in the last couple of weeks as well. And these. Oh, look at these. So this tulip right here, the taller one, it's called Blushing Lady, again with the pointy petal and the creamy soft yellow with the pink stripe up the backside. And then the shorter tulip is Johan, it's spelled C-R-U-Y-F-F, -F, I think, Kruf. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I wanted a couple of tulips in the same color family, but different height. So it looked like, you know, you kind of gathered a bouquet up and popped it down in the pot. And I think we got it there. And these, you know, I planted in the pots last fall and then they stayed out here all winter. We put all the greens. Do you remember all the, the big branches from our flame willows and then a bunch of uh, magnolia and fir and stuff like that right over the top of them and they just did great. I actually think that they provided extra insulation for the bulbs. Not such a great uh, success with my ranunculus <laughs> up here. So don't look at them close. I did release some ladybugs in there, but they do have aphids right now. I'm thankful that they're kind of in isolation by themselves. But what I learned this year is that they do great in here when it's really cold outside and they need a little bit of protection. But once it warms up, it gets hot in those cold frames and ranunculus are a cool season flower. They're just not loving that. It's just a little bit too hot. I think they'd be okay if they were outside planted where they got lots of airflow, but these things trap heat, they work. These cold frames work really well. Uh, and you know, I'm enjoying just a little bit of color that they have, but I'm just kind of looking forward for them to just like die back. So I can pull them, pull them out, save the corms and I'll do it differently next year. I do wanna run in here real quick. It's pretty hot. We haven't turned on any air conditioner or anything yet. Uh, but I wanted to show you an <laughs> update on these Lonicera topiaries. So it doesn't feel like it's been that long, like maybe under two weeks since we trimmed these up and brought them in here. I needed to make room in the greenhouse. And I think, I think there's a reason why I've never seen this type of plant trained into a topiary form. And it could be because, you know, usually when you want a shaped plant, like as a centerpiece, you want something that doesn't grow super, super fast so that um, you're not having to trim on it all the time to keep it in the right shape. 
well, I, and I don't know. Maybe this one, this is its time to boom and maybe it'll kind of relax and not grow quite as quickly the rest of the season. Or maybe we'll end up just letting these be fluffy plants. Um, so it's just a fun experiment. I'm going to keep trimming these up. Uh, which we'll probably do in the next day or two and that will encourage more even more bushiness down below and more shape but i thought it would i thought it was interesting that they put on that much growth after their their prune but i'm enjoying them in here wait a cat came in did i see a cat come in here i saw an orange streak out of the corner of my eye uh-huh russell you can't be in here buddy Oh, he's like grabbing the chair. I want to stay in here. It's too hot in there, dude. Okay. Aaron, watch yourself on this string. The guys have strings run on both sides so that they can make the patio straight. The clear waters, it's the same arrangement on this side. Same container. We did have a pretty stiff wind last night. Kind of blew those that way. Um, and then these get afternoon sun as opposed to the other side gets morning sun. So these started blooming more fully first and they'll fizzle out first, but look at how much further along the globe masters are on this side. Kind of interesting. It's probably just a matter of days, I'm guessing. We just planted these rose topiaries. I have not watered them today, Erin. Remind me please to do that. But I love them as a frame to this area. They are just absolutely perfect. I think what I love about them is they don't even need to have blooms on them to be beautiful because they're so structural. And I think that's why I love the thought of this type of rose being in this area rather than rose bushes. Because um, rose bushes, you know, you want them for the flowers and the plants themselves don't usually look like all that amazing to me. So I'm really loving this. And then you can see the brick patio right behind me. They made tremendous progress today. Like I wanna say they did it from about here all the way around to that same spot. It's just a couple of guys working on it today. Um, and they had to bring in all the layering material underneath. But, you know, they're leaving this circle, this, it's not a circle right now, but it will be a circle. Uh, in the end, they're going to do the like bulk of the patio and then do the border. And then once that's done, we'll be able to get a feel for the space and we'll be able to decide if we want an eight, 10 or a 12 foot circle opening in the middle. And that's so helpful to me to be able to step into the space. I'm such a visual person when it comes to making decisions like that, that are like, I, in my mind, that's a pretty big decision because if you get it wrong, that's like a, tr a huge expense, you know, to fix something like that. So I'm glad we're doing it this way. It's really quite nice, but the bricks, like if you, whoop, if you come around this way and look back down to actually, yeah, yeah, this is beautiful. It's beautiful from any view right here, but you look back down toward the Hartley, you kind of get an idea for what it's gonna feel like. So if you stay there, Erin, you know, over here we'll have the, the swoops. It'll mirror, it'll be an exact mirror of the area down here. So we'll have the swoops in the corners and then the patio portion will come to about here and then there'll be flower beds right here, which I'm gonna probably have a couple benches on either side. And then the bricks will come to meet our stone stair right there. It's gonna be amazing. And then in the four corners, we're gonna have great big giant pots with some kind of, probably some kind of boxwood because all four corners have different lights and boxwoods can handle all kinds of varying lights and still look the same. So we'll probably do something like that, which is perfect because then that will visibly block the walkway that we have going to the fireplace. And we'll have some stone stair, uh, not stair, steps coming out and connecting it, but it'll be very inconspicuous. Uh, I think it's gonna flow really nicely. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also very much so looking forward to this being gone. <laughs> this is such a mess, you guys. You should see our floors. Like we clean them and in five minutes, there's footprints all over on the floor because of this powder just like sticks. Makes a huge mess. Okay, let's head to the greenhouse. Not a whole lot different in this area other than the fact that Paul and Bethany did mulch and it looks amazing. Mulch does amazing things. So these are the crab apples right here. Excuse our, <laughs> our a little bit of a mess here. These are the sparkling sprites. Oh, they are in bloom. Look at these. So these grow 12 by 12, which I think will be perfect. I'll keep them in, I'm hoping to keep them in kind of tight spheres. And I'll let them get, you know, pretty close to their mature size, but I think they're gonna be really beautiful back there. So we've got these three and then the one down there on the end. 
and then they get orange uh, crab apples in the fall and they're persistent so they hang on during the winter months the birds usually clean them up and you're not left with any kind of a mess it's awesome we have the most beautiful perennials that are sitting here waiting for us to get them in the ground so pretty and i'm hardening some stuff off i've got all of our foxglove seedlings sitting here on the ground so all four flats over there and these two flats are all foxgloves i think some of them are going to end up out at my parents all some hollyhocks that i started from seed hardening off and then right in here still have a lot to plant out in the cut flower garden but i wanted to give you an update on the green stock vertical gardens you guys i have not watered this one time we have it set up on the automatic watering system and we are about ready to harvest our first ripe strawberries so exciting and everything has grown so much so much I think one they are protected in here so there is that but I think consistency of water is so so huge um, and I don't everything gets like the equal equal parts water everything's doing really well and so this one here we started completely from seed I do not have this one set up on the automatic watering system now the white spots you see this is from our water this is what our hard water does to everything in a very short amount of time. Actually, in just one watering, it had white speckles on it. Um, so that's one good reason to set things up. Like I could clean this one off and these would come off pretty easy, I think. And since it's only watering inside, this one would not get those hard water spots anymore. Um, but we've got lettuce here, started from all this from seed. We've got Bloomsdale long standing spinach. We've got carrots. We've got radishes, which well, they're not they're looking real leafy but they haven't started forming their radish very well yet and then we've got pixie cabbage which i need to thin they're just a real small kind of baby cabbage but i'm just so thrilled with this right now everything's just doing so great i just had to show you all right let's go to the raised bed garden oh it just makes me so excited and happy to look across here and see the bricks that match the hartley bricks and those bricks you guys Erin picked up, a, I don't even know how many pallets you bought, but Home Depot had a huge sale on these bricks. So he picked up some extra pallets for us to just have on hand for projects so that they would match the bricks that we were using elsewhere. That was a good move. A smudge on your cheek? Where? Yeah. Do I have a smudge? How long was that there? I don't know. Oh, well, hopefully not the whole time. Lavender is starting to wake up. It's a little slow. We got some pots planted today. Um, there's not a whole lot different in this space other than, uh, let's see, peas have come up. We've got peas up. We've got spinach up big time. That came up great. The uh, row of Italian garlic. So these three rows I planted last fall, they came up beautifully. Then I had a row of Italian that all kind of just perished. But I had some leftover seed garlic or just garlic heads in our root cellar that had already started to sprout. So I thought, well, I'm just going to put them out here and see what happens and they're all living and growing except for maybe one that was right here I don't know what happened to that one. Oh, there's a little casing that went around it anyway so that's a kind of a fun experiment if you know you need to plant garlic not quite at the right time see what happens we've got some cabbage in these two beds the carrots are up you can see some lines of green I hope right in there they didn't get too messed up by the cats. The cats usually like to just sit in here. They lay in here, in fact. Yeah, look, look at this one right here, Russell. They just lay in these beds and it kind of messes up seeds a bit. But these are the uh, Oregon sugar pod peas. Looking forward to those being ready. Right through here, the west side, the tulips are starting to look so pretty. So I planted, I, th I think these are clear waters. <laughs> I think those are just some extras that I had. And then we have one called Best Purple. And these are throughout the west side over here. And we've got some more of the sauna right here. And we've got some toys. This is like the perfect lane for the kids because they can cruise for quite a distance. <laughs> um, I will show you my shining moment for spring displays. And that would be the urns. <laughs> I planted, I planted white parrot tulips in all these urns and i have one bloom one in each urn highly do not recommend planting the white parrots i don't know what the deal is um but yeah they don't like this situation at all i just find it kind of funny that there's oh maybe one of them has two blooms now but see one bloom that one might have two we recently planted some cat's pajamas nepeta right here 
And again, this uh, bed has not been mulched yet. The pink perfusion salvia. Oh, we've got three. This one is an overachiever. Look at this little bouquet. How perfect. At least they're, they did it kind of balanced, you know, instead of like having three being glorious and one being really kind of crummy. I love the best purple. I think that is just the most pretty color. Oh, look at that. The David Austins that we moved, that's the Mary Rose variety. We moved five of them and they just are killing it. They're doing amazing. Little thrift right here, real pretty. And the Instant Karma Elderberry is looking really good. In fact, this is a good time now to get out here and kind of trim out some of the little tips that didn't survive winter, kind of clean it up a little bit. But this one will have huge discs of blooms here pretty soon. Uh, we had a ton of daffodil, or do have a ton of daffodils. You can see them still in here. Uh, but those are kind of spent-ish. Not all of them are totally spent. They're really pretty. But there's the spring snow crab apple looking amazing. Just in the last couple of days, those blooms have opened. And then the service berry right there. That's kind of bloomed out, isn't it? Like in the light, it kind of looks like it might still be in bloom. Okay, I think we'll head out to the South Garden now. Did I miss anything up here? I don't think I did. You know, these tulips look really nice. These are the Gamay blend right there. So the same ones we have up by the house, but these started blooming later. And I think it's because maybe those get the reflective heat from the house or maybe they're more protected. So these don't look quite as spent. And then I did plant three, something ballerina, lilac last year. They're a type that stays fairly small or something dancer. I, I can't remember. Look. Oh, they smell so good. And it makes me happy to see them thriving and looking so great. So there's three of them right here. And I have to be kind of careful because, you know, all this stuff right here, we can't plant anything too huge. You still need to access. And there's also a, like some kind of a, what is this, Erin? St oh, a storm sewer. So we know it's there. We just can't put anything around it too much um, and nothing pokey and nothing that's going to shroud it. So anyway, I'm really happy with how these are doing. Okay. Let's head to the grass. The red bud is looking exceptional right now. So, so pretty. This is the one I dug out of the ground. It was uh, just right by where those the gamay tulips were. And I didn't realize they put down such a, like a tap root and oh my goodness, I about broke a shovel trying to get this one up out of the ground, but the honeybees are on it thick right now and it's doing really well. And today we planted up the urn that's out here. The yucca that was in that pot was a beast to get out. I don't know what the deal was, but it took us a very long time, but now it's got fresh plants in it. So you get to see the beautiful persimmon supertunias backed by the beautiful copper image tulips back here. Oh. This is going to be fun to watch fill in. We had to kind of uh, figure out a way to get drip system, a drip system up there. So we used a drill and just notched out a hole to where this was, you know, it could uh, go up there freely and not get pinched because this does not have a hole in it. Like this is a solid piece of concrete. Uh, so I think that'll work out really well. That's why I put yuccas in there to begin with because I knew we couldn't get drip to them and they needed to be something that I didn't have to drag a hose to all the time. Okay, so we've got the copper image tulips, which are planted very sporadically. <laughs> there's a lot of space in between them. I don't remember planting these, but there's some pink ones in there as well. And oh, did you just show the dead spruce? Oh. There is a dead spruce, everyone. I was trying to avoid it, but I thought you just panned the camera over there. You win some, you lose some. True. These two are looking really great. We planted those at the same time. Uh, we have not taken off with our stone walkway since the last time Aaron and I worked on it. Hoping to do that here fairly soon before it gets too warm. Uh, but we have started planting some things. You know, we've got uh, some perennials here, which uh, they did get drip, Paul and Aaron ran drip to it not long ago. And then we planted some yarrow right back here. The firefly peach sky. And I can see where the drip system watered today. That's awesome. But look at the color, especially on this one. So pretty. Look at that saturated color there. The other ones are gorgeous too, just like a little bit of a muted version. Uh, now our blackberries, I'm not really sure. They've got new growth at the base of a lot of these. This one looked the best, 
but I do think we maybe lost, no, that one has just this one maybe. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if they, if they sprout. I've got other ones in the greenhouse I can replace them with. Uh, the fall golds, we just planted the rest of this row and then someone's gonna come and dig all these suckers and take them to their house. So that's why they're still here. Cut flower garden is starting to shape up a little bit. These containers here, I planted Angeliques, which are these ones right here, kind of a double light pink. And then there's Averons, which are a double, now well, these must be the Angeliques and Averons. Averons supposed to be the deeper pink of the two. They just started to bloom the last couple of days. So this should be beautiful here in about a week. Uh, the cut rose garden, we've added maybe five more roses since the initial planting. I've done hardly anything in this space, you can tell. Uh, I did plant ranunculus, but, and those have all come up and they're looking really good, but we've done no mulching in this space or edging. And then this area here, it's nice to see kind of how it might shape up in the end. We did order benches, six foot benches, but we won't get them until July. Um, so we get to just dream about those for the next couple of months. I'm really looking forward to it. We haven't decided if we're gonna cut out grass this year or just wait on it. I'm not really sure what we're gonna do with the center space, but we're in really no hurry to do anything here. You know, the, it, the grass is being watered and all of that. So um, we might just let it be the way it is this year while we work on other projects. Um, our perennial section, I have planted several things out here. Uh, let's see, some Eryngium, uh, Campanulas, I did some Black Eyed Susans, Yarrow, and then I'm getting ready to plant foxgloves and delphini more Delphiniums. Our wheat is looking great over there. And I planted all the sweet peas, which I did not film because it was a very hot afternoon. It was like Sunday, I think. Samantha was sleeping and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get out there and just get, get it done really fast. And it was pretty fast. I got out here and got them all planted. They're all doing great. Now you might notice we've got this area flagged off. Erin uh, and I tackled this yesterday. So I came out and weeded this whole section, um, the whole kind of mulched looking section and raked up all of the existing mulch because we had kind of some, you can see remnants of it, that chunkier kind of darker black mulch. Uh, we got that all removed and then we seeded grass. So that was our last area to seed. We figured, you know, with it warming up this week, we could get the grass in and maybe even see a little bit of green by the end of the week. I don't know what's gonna happen though with our cool down. I don't know if it's gonna, what's gonna happen, but I kind of like to go around this way and maybe uh, sneak into the orchard somehow. We can't really walk on this much. Would it be okay for us to walk on it a little? I'll just go around and jump the corner. You wanna jump the corner? Okay. No uh, signs of life from our dahlias yet, but I did, did dig up a couple of clumps and they were great looking. This space is so beautiful to me and it makes me like today when I was out here seeing all of the pollinators, I was down like this. <laughs> I was just sitting in here looking like there's a moth right there. I was just looking at everything that was flying in here and feeding on these and just thought this is perfect. I love it. There's still some strappy leaved foliage. We're still waiting on a couple of different daffodils. I don't know, um, like one of them's white, like a more white. We did a floriculture blend in here of bulbs from color blends this past fall. So we might get a few more blooms before the bloom season is done. Once the blooms are done and the foliage has started to yellow and die back, which some of them have, um, I'm gonna try to find an example. But after that happens, Aaron's gonna come in here and mow. And he's so happy to do that. He's really having to hold himself back from not mowing this right now. Um, but we wanna mow it a couple times a season. We'll probably mow it once after the bulbs are done and then maybe once mid season and then once right before winter. So it, during the winter, it'll be very short so that when those early blooms come up, which are naturally shorter, we'll be able to see them. And then as the grass grows, the ones that are taller can compete with it a little bit more. But I'm just loving it, and all the trees are doing so well. Uh, I don't think we lost our peaches this year, which is awesome. Uh, our peaches last year bloomed out, and we had a huge, not huge, yeah, it was like a huge um, cold snap that I wasn't expecting. Huge is not the right word. <laughs> Doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. Anyway, we lost all of our peaches um, and we lost our apricots last year. We lost our plums. I don't think I got many or any plums. Um, this year, I think we're gonna get fruit off of all of them. We'll see what happens. I did tent. I tented our apricots 
and I tinted our new nectarine in the back because we did have a cold snap come through. It was like uh, 25 and so, or 27, something like that. But I tinted them for two nights. I just left the frost protection cloth on them. Uh, and so I'm hopeful that that was enough to keep them fruiting this year. Okay, so I wanna go through the, the second part of the south garden here, but I wanna go all the way out to our driveway and come through this way because it's mulched on that side. It's like the only spot with mulch and it looks so pretty. All right, so this view, you guys, looking through this flower bed with the fresh layer of mulch. Oh, I don't know what it is, but it just instantly makes everything look so lush and so beautiful and so healthy all of a sudden. I love it. And things are looking pretty good. I mean, there's, I'll show you a forsythia. I'm having the hardest time with forsythias. I've planted them a couple of times. One time gophers took them out. This time, like, it's almost like they melt. I plant one and it's like the plant just melts and big sections of it die. Um, and one of them this year has one bloom. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'll show you. See, so, like, look through this area. You can see there's, uh, I think these are thalias, the white uh, daffodils right in there, and they're kind of around. There's Bella Estrellas over there, which we'll get a closer look at those. They're kind of around our um, little girl statue over there. But there's thalias around the, the uh, crab apple and around the linden. And our little willow shrub is doing really well. Isn't that gorgeous? I planted this in a video. I'll have to look up the name of it. But it is a type of willow. And it has just thrived in this spot. And I love the silvery blue foliage. We have Menton tulips in this area that you can see how far along they are. So we'll get blooms here shortly from those. Um, we've got more, I'm trying to remember what this one is. Ab no, this is an avalanche. Those are avalanche. These might be thalias as well. In fact, I think they are. Nice, just clear white tulips. We've got a Centara double blue lilac right here and a ton of Mentons. Wherever you see like the strappier leaves, the tulip foliage, those are gonna all be big pink tulips. And then we've got bunches like this, which are the leucogems. And they have the really sweet like snowdrop looking blooms. They're excellent for cutting. Uh, and I think they just look so like magical. But the Centara double blue is looking really beautiful right here. We've got a few of them back, I think two or three back in this garden area. How tall does that get? Uh, I want to say six to eight feet tall. A little smaller than like a standard lilac. Yeah, it's a pretty good size one. I have to look that up though to verify. We've got a lot of perennials still yet to even come up. Coreopsis, I can see some of the growth down below, but they haven't uh, put on a lot of growth. So this is our best looking one. This is called a show off. And then there's this one where like half of it died. And then there's this one that has one bloom. <laughs> so... I mean, I see buds all over like it's wanting to bloom and they're not dried up. They're pliable. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't get with it, that's dead. The stem is probably all dead. Um, I'll probably take it out. I'll probably, eh, I might leave that one, but that one I'll probably end up taking out if it doesn't get with it here pretty quick. Oh, right here we have the Lady Jane tulips, which hindsight, I would have tucked these in somewhere else because they're so small and the leaves kind of, unless you put them real close together, which is how I should have planted them, I don't think you really get a really good effect. Uh, they do open quite large during the day though. So these little like torpedo looking tulips, like they'll be this big around during the day, just wide open and then they close up at night and they look more white during the day because that's what the color of the interior is. And then at night is when you can see or, you know, early morning or evening time, you get to see the pink on the outside of the petals. But I love the little, they're like a kind of an icy blue and really curly. Ooh, look at that. It looks like that curly fries hosta. Kind of a neat look. But so what I would do with this type is I would probably do the trench method. I don't prefer to plant bulbs that way normally because it's a lot more work than using an auger. Uh, but I would just dig a big trench and just jam these, jam that trench full of these bulbs. Um, and let it be more of a bouquet instead of individuals. But they go through this area, and I hope they naturalize. I think that would be a really fun look in this area, especially if they get thicker. This is a European white birch right here, I think is the name. And it woke up earlier than a lot of stuff out here. It's doing beautifully. It looks so pretty. We were, Aaron and I were kind of talking about how we kind of want to take out the Corinthian lindens that we have, because they've done nothing in, what, three years? 
I've done nothing, like zero, maybe maybe grow, grown like an inch, possibly, and they're starting to get cracks down the trunk. It'd be pretty to put more of these in, I think. I love how they move in the breeze, and I like that they're awake and looking alive earlier in the season. Oh, this time of night is just so beautiful. But a lot more perennial activity. You can see these were planted here last year. These are the pink profusion salvia, and they've got buds. So we'll get color here fairly soon from those. Uh, the boxwood that we dug up from behind the Hartley, the round one, survived. So far it's alive, which is very nice. There's a really good stand of the Luca gems right here. They're just so delicate looking and so pretty. A bunch of iris. We transplanted these from behind the Hartley as well. So there's a patch here, as well as we've transplanted a lot of stuff. There's a tulip called Bud Light right here. Just a really soft yellow. Uh, we transplanted all of the Veronica, right? I think it was, no, we didn't transplant the Veronica. We transplanted these geraniums and the iris and all the sedum. Looks like I got a daylily in with my sedum as well. Anyway, they've all done great. We've got the lemon squeeze penstemon, or penicetum, not penstemon, penicetum right there. Couple piles of mulch on this side, but there's some really pretty bulbs over here. So we have a daffodil called banana splash. It's a double. I think they call those a, is it a split corona? Is that what they call them? But it's super bright yellow. I love that. Especially along with, this is more of the gamay blend in here, the gamay blend tulip. So, I mean, just imagine it with a dark layer of mulch in here. Those would just shine even more. They look so pretty together. I don't think our Vanessa Bells transplanted. It was a long shot. Do you remember, Erin? I mean, Erin had to help me dig these out. We barely got any roots on them. There's some growth coming up right here, but I don't know if these are own root roses or if they were grafted. Um, so we'll probably have to take those out. It was worth a shot. You know, they were gonna get bulldozed. Uh, so they were going to either try to make it here. It was super hot when I moved them and they were big. Maybe if I would have cut them back right away, who knows. Right behind you, Erin, look at the spring groves. Look at how gorgeous those look. I think we kind of uh, reminisced during our last tour about how tall these were, how big they were when we planted them and also what it looked like out here when we planted them. It looked like absolute Mars and I don't know but how you guys stuck with us through all the planting in here, especially in the initial stages, because it looked so rough. Like there was not a lot to say for this space for a long time, it felt like. And I feel like it's come so far and you guys have stuck with us and these plants have stuck with us, which has been really nice. This smells so good, I can just not standing here. Um, but these have put on a, a ton of growth. We have a whole bunch of mentons in here about ready to bloom maybe in the next week or so. And that's just kind of the last area I think we'll look at. We've got uh, another urn with, I just matched the same plantings from the last one. We've got the Bella Estrella daffodils here, which look at these. I love the little fluffy scalloped center. They are so beautiful and they come up so, so thick and so robust. We've got Camassia in here, which I've actually never grown before but it all came up and it's all throughout here and they all have like two, I think two bloom stalks. They're supposed to get up fairly tall and have purple blooms. So that will be really nice. Sesky Dwarf Gold Birch, super wonderful, beautiful shrub. I love the bright color it adds. Oh, Aaron wanted me to point out the dead cedar. It's still got some flexibility though. <laughs> I think it's probably done. This is a green arrow. I wonder if it stays too wet, if it stayed too wet over here for it. That is possible. The juniper's doing fine. Junipers are bulletproof. Apollo maple's looking good. We put this in last year. It's one that grows fairly tall, but kind of narrow, like 10 feet, 10 feet wide. So that'll be a real fun one to watch fill in. And just a bunch of other ornamental grasses and peonies coming up in here. Um, we will have Budleas up in here very soon. Well, I say very soon. They're the last things to break dormancy. Those in Rosa Sharon's. Serviceberry, this one's still sort of in bloom. And then you can see all the Bella Estrellas around our little statue there. Oh, a couple more plants. A couple more plants we gotta take a close look at. This is an angel white lilac right here, planted this last year, and look at it. 
that is so full of blooms and it's about ready to about ready to create a show over here and then the last thing is this tickle creek white bark birch which doesn't have a white bark yet but it will once it matures and it only grows six by four so it's about at almost at its mature height i'm five four um, and then it'll broaden out a little bit but it just has such a delicate beautiful structure to it and i'm thankful that it made it through last summer i didn't know i didn't know how it would handle our heat and all of that and it's just done beautifully one last thing I want to show you is actually in the corner of the new property. So let's head that direction. But first, look at this. Take a look at that lawn, you guys. Doesn't that look amazing? Do you remember what it looked like last year? This lawn was just seeded last year. And it, oh my goodness, I'm surprised it looks this lush. But you've been super, Aaron's been super dedicated with amendments and all this stuff. He was out here with a rake the other day, like hand thatching little areas of the grass. So you can really tell that you're pouring yourself into this lawn air and it looks really, really nice. So we are at the corner of the new property. If you kind of twirl around, you can see the lawn and the house just to get your bearings. This is really the only thing we're gonna be doing with this property this year while we kind of iron out what we're gonna be doing with the rest of it going forward. Uh, but we've got two rows here. Erin came in and tilled. In fact, maybe you saw the video. It will have gone up before this one did. Uh, but they are 250 foot rows, just two of them. And one of them we're gonna do sunflowers and probably some vine crops. And this one I planted a ton of onions and a bunch of potatoes. So those are all in and they're being watered. Um, I ran the drip tape and got the, I had to iron out a couple of blowouts. Um, yeah, I had a huge like lake right here the other day, but I got it handled. And then Paul and Bethany put together the frame of one of our high tunnels today. And they're gonna put the plastic and shade cloth on it tomorrow and then the end walls. We're getting our first load of annuals, I think this week. Um, and this is where we're going to have all of our plant overflow. So all the stuff that you know they see on the ground scattered all over the place. Um, this is just a temporary spot for it. We're not intending to keep the high tunnel up here forever. In fact, we would like to tuck it in further back in this property. But for now, since we haven't developed any of this, we just thought this would be the, what's well, the closest access to water because we haven't dug our well yet on this property. So it just worked out really nicely. And I think it's gonna be kind of fun to have this space out here, a space that's just a little bit more wild like we're gonna you know take care of the weeds within the vegetable rows but other than that <laughs> i'll let everything kind of do its its natural thing until chad comes and levels it he still needs to work on leveling the property up and i don't know at this point with this being in the corner if that's something we'll have to wait on but we'll just see what happens and that's it you guys lots going on around here always uh, lots of fun stuff exciting stuff and yeah happy to share it with you all so anyway thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one Bye.